So we talked about functions and we made this awesome function called an int adder. And we talked about variables, but in this I want to talk about a different type of variable we're going to make uh, called arrays. And arrays are basically containers that hold uh, multiple variables of the same type and in an uh, uh, orderly fashion, in an indexable fashion. Um, so we're going to create an array here. And since we use, I'm just going to use ints because we used them before, I'm going to name it. But the important part when you're creating this int array is this button on the side here. That's going to be how to create an array. If you don't hit that button, you're going to have to recreate it. You have to do this on creation. Um, and we can create an array of integers that will allow us to do this. And you see that the, the variable looks a bit different from the single variable that we made there. Um, it has a size to it. And this size is how many int variables this is going to hold. Uh, it's going to hold, let's just make it, we'll make four. It'll hold four int variables here. And if I drop that down, you see now this holds, this is a container for four variables. Now those values in there, that's zero, one, two, and three. Very, or arrays start at a zero index. So it, even though there's four of them, they're accessed by zero, one, two, and three. Um, and I'm putting values in here, one, two, three, four. So while the index, the indices are zero, one, two, and three, those can hold any values you want in there. I'm gonna delete all of this stuff and just show us how to use these variables. So I added a variable, an array variable in here on start uh, in the cube, and it's not really going to do anything to the cube, but um, it, we're just going to debug log this out anyway. You can see that it looks like it's a stacked up thing, and it has those, its plugs and sockets look like the same thing we clicked to have an array. So that's how you know if it's an array. And if I drag off, I have all the stuff I can do with an array. Add to it, copy to, get an element at an index, get the length, remove something from it. Um, I can do all those things. So if I wanted to, you see that two has the value of three in it. The index of two has the value three in it. Because uh, again, those are just containers that hold values. It just has four containers to hold values. And the fours are zero, one, two, and three. Uh, and so how do we use this in a way that, uh, how do we go through this container and get the values that we want? Um, I'm going to look for a for loop here. Uh, we're going to use something called a for loop. And a loop is what we're going to do to get this functionality. I think we'll just find it in execute. If I, if I find it here, there's a lot of things with loop in it. Uh, I'll just do execute will allow me to find it under execute somewhere down here. Execution flow, that's what I'm looking for. Four. I'm going to do a for each first. Uh, just to get the concept. A for each is going to loop through every single one of them. Uh, I don't have to tell it when to start or to stop. It's just going to say, I'm going through the whole thing. So I'm going to plug in my array. You can see that it wants an array with that little symbol. I'm going to plug in the execution to get this thing started. And it's going to go through each of these things and give me the value that is, that is in each of the indices here. So it's going to go through 0, 1, 2, 3, and give me all of those values and spit them out. Um, and to see that work, I'm going to store it in this my int variable. I'm going to use the single int variable to hold the values. And I'm going to add all of these together as they come out of here. So in the loop, um, I just want to, I want to add in the loop here. Um, make it an, uh, the variable. I'm going to hold my, my int. To that, I want to add what comes out of each of the passes through this. So it's going to go uh, add one, add two, add three, add four. And it's going to add them and sum them up as we're looping through this. So the eventual result of this should be 10 because the first time it comes through, uh, zero is what it starts at, is going to have one added to it. And that's going to be one. And then one plus two is going to be three. And then 3 plus 3 is going to be 6, and 6 plus 4 is going to be 10. So my int should equal 10 at the end of this because it's going to loop through four times, um, and it's going to add each of the results to that, and then, uh, and then it's going to spit out. And we'll debug log this out also so that we can see the result of this. But right there, it just kind of loops through all of them and, and says we're going to add them all up 
as an array. And again, this is just an example of how to use an array, a very simple example. Um, there are other ways to do that, uh, other ways to, a lot of other ways to use arrays, but I just want to show you a very simple one. So we're going to log out the result of this. We should see 10. And we do see 10, but we see 1, 3, 6, and 10. And that is because I put that in the loop uh, instead of after it was all done. So you can see there's two tabs here. There's the loop and there's the done. And it was going to log out every time it ran through there. And you can see it did it four times. It said 1, 3, 6, and 10. Uh, but I just want it to log out when it's done, when it's all done with everything. So I'm going to do all the work down here. And then when it's done is when I'm going to log it out. And I'll just make another, uh, I'll make another variable, just another version of that variable so that I don't have to drag up from the other one. Now it'll loop through four times and it should just go 10 at the end. When it's done looping, here's where I go. And there it is. You can see that it's 10. It's 10 there. So that's a four each. And that's going to go through every single one of those. Um, there's another way we can do this with a for loop and I'll just find it through execution uh, for loop not space execution we'll find it there it is a for loop not a for each a for loop and this one's a little bit different because you can see that I asked for the first and the last there so it's asking how far do I want to go through this array um, I want to start at zero and if the last was one then it would only go through zero and one and you see also that it, it doesn't give me the int out, it gives me the index. So this basically just says how many are there, and it's going to loop through and give me the index into the array. Now I could put 3 there for 0, 1, 2, and 3, and it would stop at 3. Uh, and that I could hard code that in if I knew there was 3 there, but I don't want to hard code that in because I could add more to this, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have to go change the code. So I'm going to get this int array variable and drag off of it and you'll see the variable called length and that length is just see that array size that is what the length is going to be and the length is four and that makes sense because there's four things in there um, but I really can't have uh, I can't have it be four there because there, it starts at zero there's zero one two and three are the index indices that I can have so I really need to subtract one from this. If I put four in there, it would actually yell at me because four is not a valid index. The last index is three. So I need to do the length minus one as the last possible index I can have into here. And you can see that it gives me an index. It's not giving me the value of that int. It's giving me the index of that. So I need to get the element at the index. And so if I do array again, get element at index. This is going to give me the value at that index. So at, uh, at index zero, the array, I have to pass in the array that I want. In this array, at index whatever comes out of that for loop, so it's going to start at zero and it's going to end at three, it's then going to give me the int uh, that I want, the int value that I want and I can add here and I can just add one to it and assign my int again so that it stores it in that value and then when I'm done with all of that I can log out what that int was again so cube my int and then log out the value of this and we should see 10 again, if we did this all correct. Clear that console. And we're only seeing five, so we messed up somewhere. Let's go look at where we messed up. We got the length, we subtracted one, that's correct. And the max value can be is three, that's correct. We're getting from there going into that index and we're assigning back into the int um, I see what the issue is uh, at zero I think I see what it is 
at zero we're going to there's the problem right there we're only adding one every time so we're adding one every time and we didn't want to do that we wanted to add what the value the current value of int was instead of just one every time so uh, that's where we messed up there we actually need to add whatever we're assigning my int to so it can continuously add them up over and over and over again so adding a hard-coded one in there was not what we wanted we wanted this and there we go and there's 10 and so that's how you use a for loop like i said sometimes we want to control how many times we go through this so we don't want to go through every single one like a for each loop we want to go through the ones we want to control and i just controlled it there we are going through all of them but i could say stop at two i could say stop at one i could say stop at anything i needed to with this this for loop here instead of for each.